Let me tell you the story of Tyrell. He's one of the kids in the study. In fifth grade, he gets harassed by police for being too tall. That's what the officer tells him. He stops him. He searches him. Tyrell's like, I'm a fifth grader, man. What are you doing? And the cop goes, you don't look like a fifth grader. You look like a drug dealer. You're too tall to be a fifth grader. So let me search you. In sixth grade, he's having a bad day. He sits in class. He's kind of just, you know, just frustrated. And the teacher gets scared. And she calls the cops on him because he's, he's threatened by him. In eighth grade, he decides to sell drugs and is arrested. He says, man, if I'm going to be treated like a criminal, might as well reap the benefits. His mother is evicted from public housing. This is when, you know, um, just, I mean, over the last 20 years, there's been huge reductions in the welfare state. But this is one of the phases of the reduction. His mother is impacted by it, and she hits the streets trying to survive. She becomes addicted to crack, and he tells me, my mother smokes so much crack, she calls herself Bubbles. I recorded 21 police stops in three years, and that was just once a week coming out to see him. He repeat, I would ask him about police stops, he would laugh, he's like, Every day, normal part of life. On this day, he's re, um, he is um, mourning his little cousin, rest in peace right there on his uh, pants, Suge, because uh, that alley known as Death Alley, Tyrell had beat up the crack dealer who was responsible for his mom being addicted to crack. The crack dealer came back and killed his cousin in retaliation. So these kids have it really tough, right? Not only do they have it tough in terms of facing violence, but they have it tough in terms of encountering the criminal justice system. So what are the themes with Tyrell? He's marked prior to committing a crime. He's pushed into jumping. And what that means is that People have agency, but then there's structure, right? And that, that we're not just victims of structure either, but that we also take that leap sometimes, right? And so we constantly, in qualitative work, right, you're able to see those nuances. You're able to see how structures impact people, but then how people make sense of those structures and then respond in their own ways. So the meshing of the punitive arm of the state with the nurturing arm of the state and what I call an under-policing, over-policing paradox, you have whenever, whenever you don't need the cops, they're there, like uh, harassing a group of 14-year-old kids hanging out in front of a store. Whenever you need them, like taking away that crack dealer or taking away sort of the, the big time sort of extreme um, guys, they're, they're, somehow they're not around. Now, just some images from my other project of over-policing here. I asked the youth, actually, to take some images of things that impacted their lives. And this is what they came back with. This is a monitoring device, police stopping them, police stopping them, police stopping them. And here, I brought them on a trip to the university. The university police officer stopped us put the boys on the ground, took their shirts off to check for gang tattoos, humiliated them in front of all the other college students, and I kept saying, hey man, I'm a professor here. Like that was gonna save me. It didn't. He says, I don't care who you are, sit your ass down over there before I arrest you too. 